Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with one of three coffee cards. This one is layered coffee cups using Avery L's Cool Beans stamp set. The other two will be coming soon if they are not trailing on the heels of this one. I planned a coffee week, but my schedule keeps getting upended, so might be some other videos in between, but stay tuned for more coffee cards following this one in the near future. I've stamped my images onto some cardstock from Nina, and this is Desert Storm. This is not the same as Craft, just so you know. It, the color might be Craft, but the paper is still Nina, so it's going to work with your markers. Craft cardstock, depending on what brand, may or may not accept some of your Copic ink. So I'm going to use a couple different colors of red to make some shading on the outside. I'm keeping it really simple. Now, if, if you're somebody who's just learning how to blend, doing an idea like this where you're making an image that you can keep coloring out past the lines may help you to suddenly get the idea of blending because you don't have to stop at the edge of the image. You do have to die cut or fussy cut them out and there's, there's that, but if you're trying to learn how blending works, this will help you because then you can just have a swash of color and not stop the marker because stopping the marker is always the hardest part of trying to keep the ink from ble bleeding outside the lines, etc. I decided I wanted my hearts to be white. They will eventually, and I, I know this when I'm doing it, they will eventually be a little bit, little bit, I can't even speak, pink, because the ink that's in the pen may absorb some of that color from underneath, and a strong color like red is more likely to do that than a lot of other colors. And that's okay with me, because pink hearts on a red coffee cup would be cute. I've also stamped it onto a piece of solar white cardstock so that I can make the lids for the cups. And you could do this on a little scrap as well. You don't even have to have the whole cup, just enough to get those cup tops on there. And notice the shading that I did on the inside of that lid there. Look how it looks like it's receding in there. Really great tip to make something look like it's going down into it is to give it that kind of shading. And the shading I'm doing on the cups and the lids, there's no science to this because in every lighting situation, the lighting will be different on cups like this. It's just the nature of it. So make it good enough that people's eye is faked into believing that it's for real and then you'll be fine. Don't stress out about it. I stamped my images onto another piece of the Desert Storm so that I could do my shading without having to worry about coloring right up to the edges of the image and it also gives me a guideline for putting my cutout pieces down there. So they were all fussy cut with my little detail scissors and then I can just slap them in there using some flat adhesive for parts of it and then dimensional for other parts. So those were done with flat adhesive and you can use ATG guns or tape runners or be creative tape, lots of different kinds of things that you can use on the back of that. And I'm even going to use that. I used the uh, dimensional adhesive for the second cup and flat adhesive for the, uh, the wrapper on that one because that one doesn't need to be popped up as well because I don't want this to be too dimensional and then have to cause extra postage at the post office. A uh, tip for cutting out when you're cutting out something with white edges around it like this. I used to try to use a black marker since the edge is black because of the stamping but I found that I can use a, some sort of a gray in order to do that. And then I don't have maybe black ink seeping into the image because I've had to recolor some sometimes. The dimensional adhesive that I'm using here is Tombow's Power Tabs, super sticky, and they're not as thick as the roll of dimensional adhesive. So it works really well. You get a little bit of dimension without actually causing the post office issues. And I'm gonna add it to a card base with two layers of die cut cardstock as well, just so I have a little bit more finesse on them, not just the coffee cups themselves. And it looks kind of clean and simple, but has something a little fancier along with it. And I love making thank you cards because I send out a ton of thank you cards, especially to my wonderful patrons. Thank you to all who have joined in in this last couple weeks. I appreciate your support. And links for all the supplies are in the doobly-doo down below, and you can watch more videos. But most of all, go make something. Just go make something and send it to somebody in the mail. I'll see you later. Bye.